Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Harry Potter set, Attack on the Burrow. I'm going to take you through the details of the main build here as well as the minifigures, but I need to give you a bit of fair warning in advance. I am not a Potter head. I've seen the movies about once and a little bit each, and that's the extent of it. So if you are a Potter head yourself, and you're very knowledgeable about this stuff, and you need to hear from me repeats of all the encyclopedic knowledge of every little detail that you already know, I can't help. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm just going to be going through this as a LEGO fan and I'll do my best. The set comes with eight minifigures, of course the main house, and then just one small insignificant side build. The side build is just a representation of a bit of firewall or barrier and you can open up a part of it and close it back up. And now we're done with this, so let's move on to the main thing. The Weasley house here I think is one of the most bright and colorful and artful looking things that Lego has made in the Harry Potter line at least. Even if you're not familiar with Harry Potter at all, you're not familiar with this structure, I think if you see this on display somewhere, if you see this model on somebody's shelf or a desk, even if it's at a distance, it's going to draw you in. It just has a lot of visual impact and it's it's very immediate as soon as you see it it just it draws you in and part of that is because of the color or color combination and part of it is because of its unique architecture it's unrealistic you know fanciful architecture especially the fact that this entire top half is slightly angled just slightly angled you can see this is horizontal right here that's completely straight so all this and above is at a slight angle as it should be, and the the suggestion there is that it's just held up by a couple of these struts over here in, in the corners. I think that the real thing and most of the, the depictions of this, whether movie-based or original uh, book-based, have made this look a little bit more extreme than the LEGO model does, with more overhang and just more extreme details, more extreme angles and everything, but I think that Lego captured this pretty well and it's still it's still strong enough. You know, it, it's not at all fragile. It looks like it's falling apart, but it's not as a as a Lego thing. Back here, that little pig pen, which is nicely detailed up. I'll tell you, the first floor, building up the first floor, uh, took quite a while and had me worried that this was going to be a much larger, much more significant project to build in general than I was expecting based on the number of parts. However, after you complete the first floor, which also has most of the stickers in the set. Let me bring this around to the side. You can see a bunch of the windows in particular have clear backed stickers. There are two sticker sheets in total. One is, one is clear backed and one is white backed. Uh, but once you finish this first level and take care of all those sticker applications, things get much faster and much easier. But I'll tell you, I am not at all mad at the level of detail down here because it's very, very charming, especially as we come around to the back and start taking a look at the interior. So the whole building is open around the back, as is pretty typical for Lego stuff. I mean, this does look good from at least three angles, you know, the, the two main sides and the front. But as you go all the way around to the back, OK, it's open to get access into there. But they do allow you to get even more access and have a little bit more configurability to the whole place by allowing all this to swing out. So the kitchen and the dining room can become its own thing. You have the different colored chairs there, a bit of the, the kitchen sink and some of the, the shelving unit, you know, some of the, the built in furniture and then lots of details on the table. I mean, it's not it's not huge. It doesn't have every possible detail, but this is nice. You know, they've served up a full breakfast here. It's really nice to get those printed pieces with the, the waffle details and the eggs as well. Those are going to be useful for all sorts of things. Got the pitcher of simulated orange juice there as well. And, you know, this is just, I don't know, it's just charming. I also like how even the sink is done. Look, there's a suggestion of a basin there and a little bit of water inside. Now there is another part that can actually swing out and that's all this over here. You can just barely see a little bit of gap right there. This is actually connected with a very stiff, uh, tightly connecting uh, stud right there that goes into the backside of a headlight brick. But this allows you to open up the lower level a lot more to see things a lot better. 
So there's a fireplace. You got some firewood stacked up to the side. The bookshelf is a very bright orange color and has some depth to it with suggestions of books. You know, that's built up pretty nicely with some studs on the side construction. Got a table over here with a letter on top. And there's a little suggestion of flu powder, a small bottle of it. There's an action feature that's built into this. You may see the Technic axle that goes back there. Well, there's a knob outside. So if it'll focus, please. There we go. Right there. So I'm going to reach to the side and hopefully not get my arm in the way of the camera too much and rotate that. And this is what happens. So you activate the flu network. Uh, it's a little bit stiff. Get, ar get around. Get around. There we go. Changes up the color. That's cool. Works well. And it's integrated nicely. Over here, some more furniture that actually looks pretty good. And some of this is definitely recognizable. Candlesticks are a little bit askew there. There we go. That's a little bit better. But yeah, you know, small, small details, but nice. And like I said, some of this stuff is def definitely directly recognizable from the set that they did uh, for the movie adaptations of, of the, the stories. And then around the other side, the kitchen side, right, where all this folded out from, you have the clock there, which is built up pretty nicely. And it's very important that it makes use of some stickers to give you some extra detail and a small seat there, which will hold just a single figure and off to the side, a little ledge with a couple of potted plants. To let you see inside this room here a little bit better, I'm gonna remove the upper section, which is designed to be easily pulled off, just to let a little more light in from the top. So this represents Ginny Weasley's room and she's got the small table with the brush on it and the mirror for brushing her hair. The mirror is a sticker, but it's not actually mirrored. It's just a, uh, a non-metallic suggestion of one with the gray and white uh, pattern on it. Uh, the bed is actually pretty nice. Let me move the chair out of the way. There we go. So you can see that I like the colors of the bed, how the striping is done, although the sticker on top doesn't go the full width of the two by four uh, tile that it's on. So that's unfortunate. You know, it just doesn't give you uh, full coverage to really complete the effect. You've got the slightly recessed area with the suggestion of the sheet folded back underneath and the little pillow there. And then there's a single uh, poster up on the wall, the weird sisters. The next level up has the parents' bedroom with uh, again, a nicely done bed, you know, a nice build and it's wide enough to just barely hold a couple of figures. Although uh, they're really gonna be kind of cramped on there just with the shape of Lego minifigures and how wide their hands are. Too bad that there are no studs built into this. So you can't actually force the figures to stay there. But again, it does look nice. And then over here is just a chair and you can do some knitting right there. You can see a project is underway, possibly a scarf. Nice what they did with the use of the wands and actually having them attached to the front of the place. And you got a little basket off to the side with this suggestion of a, a single roll of yarn. Next up, this is all we get for Ron's bedroom. I think it's appropriate in its size relative to, to everything else included here. Would have been nice to get more space for it to be sure and more decorations to be sure, especially. But you do get one poster up on the wall. Again, they've done nicely with the design of the bed. I think I like the color scheme of this one the best. I like how all those, those different warm colors go together. And yeah, that's pretty appropriate. Pretty much the same build as as Ginny's bed though. Out here you got the gazebo like area, which is fairly plain, doesn't have any uh, seating structures or anything on it. And then a couple of owls up here. I'm not sure which owl this one is supposed to be. Obviously that's supposed to be Hedwig, but this looks like a great horned owl. So I guess it's just one of the ones from Hogwarts, just the, the general uh, ones that are not assigned to specific students. But yeah, let me know if if I'm wrong about that, and it actually represents one in particular, because it doesn't seem to be any of the ones related to the figures and characters included in this set. Chimney comes up here, has not too much detail, actually goes together fairly quickly. I was expecting the chimney, especially, to have a lot more detail, and a lot more parts, but no, it's pretty straightforward. And all the, the roof elements are done at the same angle, uh, just one by one, you know, not quite 45 degree, but closest to 45 degree angle, and everything has corners. So that works out pretty well. And yeah, they really didn't go too far with the part usage, I feel. 
This easily could have had so many more pieces used for all the tiles and everything, like exterior tiles, or just these few little areas up here on this level. And for the rest, they relied on like textured bricks and different colors and such. So uh, to get something that looks this nice, uh, I think that some nice, uh, some nice calculations were done, some nice uh, different experiments to figure out where to put the details. And it worked out well. Again, most of the details in this and most of the, the building time for the amount of space used goes into this first level. But after that, everything goes relatively quickly and feels pretty satisfactory to me, actually. Here are the Weasleys, Arthur, Molly, and Ginny. I love the print for Arthur for his torso. It's really good. Also notice that his, uh, on his face, the mouth is lower than usual to give him a slightly different and unique facial expression. Ginny's face, I feel, is not done right. It's not a particularly good Legoification of the actress. I feel like the eyes are done too heavy, too thick, too large. They really need to make those smaller, uh, maybe a little bit taller, just like, you know, when you're dealing with Lego stuff, you gotta be really, really subtle. I think they just didn't capture that one right. Too bad that Molly does not get any print for her leg piece, but the print around the back of the torso looks really good. And again, Arthur just steals the day here with his torso print. It's just so detailed, so unique, so cool. That is like a collectible minifigure series level of detail, level of goodness for that one. And there are the alternate faces. There's Ron, there's Harry, and on the right is Nymphadora Tonks. Uh, I feel like they didn't quite capture the look of her face, but it's not bad. And the choice of hair, I think, is pretty good. Too bad they couldn't get like a little extra, extra color sprayed onto that or something. But I think it works out pretty well. And I do like that torso print. Uh, the guys, their torso prints are just, I mean, this is a, a normal, you know, kind of default, non-theme specific one. This is kind of fancy, like it has a little higher level of detail than usual. And on the back, similar, you know, similar level of detail to what we saw on the front. Let's also get alternate faces. That's a good one. That's a good one. And that is a good one as well. Okay, Bellatrix Lestrange, or rather her hair piece, is uh, probably the coolest thing in this entire set. I mean, it's it's unique, it's special, it's kind of awesome. On the right is uh, Fenrir Greyback. He's very hairy. Unfortunately, the uh, skin tone print for his chest is just not Thick enough, just not opaque enough. They did a little bit better job with the one for Lestrange. It's too bad that Lestrange does not have any print again for the leg piece. They do print these parts, but they didn't do it for either of the ones included in the set, and that's that's too bad. Uh, like I said, they did really, really nice on Arthur Weasley's uh, torso print, but I feel like these parts needed more, needed something. Colors, fine, but the figures would have been so much more deluxe with some print there. Let's take this off. Come on, come on. It really sticks on there. Take this off as well so you can see the alternate faces here. Then I need to do something here in particular. So those two faces are good. That back torso print is good as well, but I also need to flip this around and make sure you can see what this face here, an important face, looks like with the hair piece framing it. That is a lot better, a lot more valuable, I think. I think a lot more fans will enjoy setting her up that way. The spare parts for this set are pretty nice, and I definitely look forward to using some of those little pieces for custom builds in the future, including the printed pieces. As for stickers, well, I mentioned there are two sticker sheets. Here's the other one. All right, so that's the clear backed one. This is the white backed one. The number of stickers is significant. Most of them, again, are used on the first floor and it didn't feel like they were worth it to me. Uh, just the impact that they give does not seem appropriate to the amount of time, the amount of care required to apply all of them. Also, I had issues with both of these sheets across the entire sheet each. With this one, a lot of the prints were offset a bit and you can actually see it. It's mostly just the cut. The cut is a little bit offset, so they're not, they're not nice and centered the way they should be. And then with the clear backed one, uh, ones, I have the same problem that I have had 
with many of the clear backed sticker sheets from Lego over the past year or so, if not more, where they're just not cut quite deep enough. They need to consistently just set their die cut machine to go another, I don't know, five microns deep or something like that, because they're not cutting all the way through the adhesive, which means if you just gr grab one of these stickers, you carefully peel it back, you peel it off. Oftentimes you're going to be leaving some of the adhesive behind on the sheet, or it's going to be curling over. It's going to be stretching out as you pull the sticker off, which then leaves a mark that you can see around the edge, at least one edge of your sticker when you apply it to the part. And that's, it's not fun, especially for someone who takes great care in applying stickers and wants them to be as good as they can be. Well, none of these could be, and it's not my fault. The set costs $100 US for just shy of 1,050 pieces with eight minifigures, some um, unique prints, bunch of stickers. <laughs> In terms of value, I totally get it. I definitely see $100 worth of Lego value here. Uh, I would love to say that this should be cheaper. I, I would love to say that, but I can't. It's not with a not with a straight face. Nah, I definitely see it there because if this didn't have the level of detail that it that it does, especially on that first level, that's where you really feel just how much goes into this. Then I could then I could question it. But as it is, as it's actually built with all this stuff down here, all that, with all this out here, with all that in the middle as well. Nah, this is good. This is, it's solid. Um, it has depth. You know, it's not the typical Lego facade by any means. I mean, look at it from the side. Not, I mean, there's, there's this part, but there's also the base. There's quite a bit to the base, you know? There is enough room to fit minifigures into most of the spaces. Some of them are a little bit cramped, but they're way better than usual. Uh, the thing just looks beautiful on display. It really does. Um, and it, it draws your eye in. It, it just, it's, it's a cool thing. I think that, that people who are fans of Harry Potter will really like to have this. Even if you're not a fan of Lego, it's just a really cool looking model to have. Like, treat it as, Le as Harry Potter first and Lego secondary, and it really works. That's a... That's a good thing. That's, that's a really good thing and not something that I personally would say all that frequently. I tend to look at stuff that Lego does that any company could do a model of as being like Lego first. You know, it's cool because it's Lego first and foremost and maybe because of what it represents. But in this case, as a model, like it just shines. Colors are good. Shaping is good. And of course, you know, the what it's based on and the fact that it has this weird architecture, it just makes you say, even if you're not a Harry Potter fan, you know, you can, you can look at this from across the room and, and want to look at it more. And it'll make you ask questions about Harry Potter. What is this Harry Potter of which you speak? You know, why are the buildings like this? Are all the buildings done like that? Like, tell me more. I want to know more. It's just cool. Yeah. I like this. It's done really well. It, what, what, what could have made it better? Definitely having a roof over here, even, you know, even if it wasn't closed on the back. If it just had a roof going over this and was, was then open on the back and on this side over here as well. That definitely would have made it nicer. But it would have been a little bit inconsistent going from open to semi-closed. Semi I don't know. But just, you know, more coverage is, is always better, right? Especially if they also give you the option to open it. Um, a lot of the build in this area, there's a lot that goes in here. There's, there are a lot of pieces in here and you're not able to really use that space, but it needed to be done. Just the level of detail there and the continuity and making this look good from all these angles. You know, even though this is completely open around the back, making it look good from that angle and not bad even from this angle where things are the most plain. Worth it. Worth it. The value is there. Uh, art usage is appropriate. Figure selection is good. I would have liked to see more detail on some of those. Um, and uh, Ginny, I just feel like her, her face ain't right. Personal opinion. 
on that. Just subtle, subtle little things. But overall, hey, I got a good print on this owl <laughs> this time. The last one, the face was kind of wonky. This one's a little bit better. The, the great horned uh, brown owl there. Good stuff. They didn't go too crazy with the action features. Like you got this little bit of fire over here. They didn't do too much fire. You know, it's just basically spare parts left over from the, the parts budget. And you can open it up so you can pass through there and then it closes up behind you, you know. And then the, the, the way that the flu network portal opening <laughs> works is nice. Uh, I think that, and I'm really nitpicking here. I'm just telling you like, what do I see that could have been better? And there's not a lot, but uh, one other thing, the axle that goes through for flipping the, the flames could have been hidden away a little bit better. That's it. Otherwise, nicely done. Works for a lot of people, Lego fans, Harry Potter fans, model fans, architecture fans, people who just like decorations that are interesting. People like quirky stuff in general. <laughs> this works for so many people. And $100, $100, I think, actually works for this. It's special. And it's substantive. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. As a non-Potter head, I feel like I do want to watch the movies again. The more of these sets that I that I look at, uh, the more they make me want to wa watch the movies again. Um, I'm never going to read the books. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't have that much spare time in my life and what spare time I am able to get, I will devote to other things that I'm personally more interested in. I've already got one mega, mega Potter head in the house. It's not me. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this look at this set. I certainly enjoyed it. Enjoyed putting it together. Enjoyed sharing this with you. Enjoyed looking at it. And I will keep this together for quite some time to come. If you want to see how it went together, I've got the real time build. I also have the speed build. If you want to see the whole thing relatively quickly, uh, links to those channels with that type of content are in the end screen that should be showing up right about now and also the video descriptions. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.